Welcome to Tutorial Tuesdays with Mommyish, where we try and hook you in with the sound of my voice. Now sit back and relax, because you deserve it. Hi there, this is Leah from Mommyish, and today I have a brand new tutorial, and this is what I would consider a designer tutorial, or just a tutorial for those who are curious on how to create seamless patterns easily, or what I think is easily, uh, maybe with a little practice, uh, <laughs> inside Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Uh, creating patterns is much easier and um, when you're inside of Illustrator, but not all of us have access to Illustrator. So this is just a way that you can go ahead and uh, create that seamless pattern effect. So today I thought for simplicity's sake that we would make our own little confetti type paper. I'm going to start by creating a tile. The size of the tile is completely dependent on you. The larger the tile, the less repeats of your seamless pattern you're going to see. The smaller the tile, the more repeats of the pattern you're going to see. So it's really up to you um, on what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go with a six wide and four high, which is actually the size of our typical um, large size pocket card. And because I'm doing a confetti type um, paper, all we're going to do is just use a hard round brush. You can make your dots as big or as little as you'd like. I'm going to go for, I have it on 65 here, and I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good size. Now, the first thing I do, um, and it could be because of the way I do my own settings or just so my eye can see where the repeats are after the fact. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Is I stamp the edges, or actually I always start by stamping the corners with black. Um, so I just do a stamp with, with whatever um, brush I'm going to use for my confetti right there like that. And uh, once I have that done, then I'm going to go ahead and start creating my little confetti. Now, for the sake of your eyes, I'm going to go ahead and add a white background so uh, it, it won't look too, too confusing, hopefully. And I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit. All right. So I have my hard round brush. It needs to be on the, uh, the layer that has the little edging, not on your background color. Um, the background color is there just for our own eyes. Um, yeah. So let's see, we have the blue, we have green, and let's do a yellow. Oops, he went too high. Never brush anything over the edge for this type of um, tile that we're recreating, recreating, we are creating. Um, never, never go over the edges. And you'll notice that I keep everything within the canvas for this other than those corners where it doesn't matter. You just need to stamp something there. Oh, what pattern would be complete without some hot pink? So I'm adding some hot pink in here, <laughs> of course. Surprise, surprise. Um, yeah. Okay. So now that I have this done, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to just kind of deview that, uh, deview. I don't think that's a word. Turn off that layer underneath so you can see. And now I'm going to go ahead and go to edit and then define pattern. Now what this is going to, the reason why I do this is I like to go ahead and create a document that's the size of the paper that I'm going to eventually end up with. And I want to see how my pattern is shaping up so far. And you know it will have that, um, it's going to have that weird dot there. So let's look. All right, so here we have it. And you can see this is where our repeat is, right? You can see that guy right there. And that kind of lets me know in a way what's kind of sort of going on. <laughs> so here we have the little confetti and I have my little repeat guy there and um, I want to go ahead and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I'm going to offset this layer. Um, the reason why we offset the layer is basically it's like you're making it almost almost like a puzzle that you're putting back together. It moves everything in such a way that it kind of moves the, well, it offsets it. That way we can um, continue to have our seamless tile while maintaining uh, the position of everything else. So it offsets it all equally within the canvas. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go to filter, other, and then offset. And you can either drag your black dot to where you want it to be. So this would show me this is the exact 
middle of the document or you can um, just kind of move it to where you want it to be, which is perfectly okay. Uh, when you do this, I would always make sure that there is something overlapping there on the edges. And now if you pay attention, because it is offsetting with the wrap around, so make sure you have it uh, wrap around, not uh, repeat edge pixels, not set to transparent, always wrap around. Um, I should have told you all that first. Wrap around. You can move this guy where you want it to, but just make sure that you have this there. That way you see this is the other part of this circle and so on. You can see that as you look. Um, but by keeping it on the edge, it, it offsets properly. Sometimes it won't offset properly if you don't have the edges done that way. So that's why we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to erase our old black dot and I'm going to replace it with a new color because I want to add a new color and I'm going to put a purple dot there and now I'm going to start adding purple to this pattern never going over the edges ever ever and just kind of eyeball where I feel like we need a little more now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offset again I already have my edges the way I need them to be so I'm going to just do a control F and it's going to offset it the same amount as before by doing this, I can kind of, um, you know, play around with where I want things to be. The edges, again, it worked the way I wanted it to work. Um, but what I want to do, sometimes I like to offset by a smaller distance instead of such a large distance. Let's say 300 pixels by 300 pix pixels is one inch. So this is just offsetting it an inch at a time. Um, I feel like sometimes if I do it with a smaller amount, I have a bit more control where I'm placing um, these extra dots and sometimes I can see better where um, kind of maybe spaces are that need a little, a little extra dotty love. So, um, but you'll see in this case, there's nothing along the edges this time. So I might have to create a fake, a little fake edge for us to use. And, uh, once I do that, I can see it right there and then just delete it. So I know I want to add something that's along this um, kind of this little path there. I'm only going to be adding very little more, just a very, very little bit more. Maybe a little light yellow. It's kind of a happy color. My daughter would love this. And uh, yeah, this is really, it goes to whatever you want to do, right? This is, this is all on you. Every now and then you'll notice maybe right there, there's nothing through there. And you'll want to break that up a bit because you don't want the eye to really notice that. So just something to sort of break it up. I'm being a little crazy with my dots. Um, and it really, it's dependent on how much you want to add, how much or how little. Like if I want this to be a very condensed or solid, I should say, kind of um, pattern that has a lot in it, I would just keep adding, you know, like, we let's go for it. You know, why not? Why not? And uh, yeah, sometimes I even count out how many I do. So I'll have equal amounts of colors. I mean, it's really whatever you want to do. You don't have to be as um, weird about it as I am. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not weird. Yes, I am. I'm weird. All right, let's go ahead and do another offset. And again, I can kind of see areas that I couldn't notice before. That's one of the things I like about offsetting is that you do, I find, I tend to notice um, little spots that I didn't notice in the, the moment before. So I just offset again, control F, quick way to do it. And I just start adding more and more to this pattern. And I think a few over here and we're almost done. Maybe some more green. This, it could use more green, don't you think? Maybe a little green right there. Maybe one right there. Another guy over here. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and edit define pattern. Okay. So now when we come into this layer again, and remember, this is what I started off with. And now I just added a ton more. I don't know why I keep adding drop shadow. I'm such a weirdo. Bam. There we go. Now we have this very full and pretty confetti pattern. Um, and I love it. I mean, we're supposed to love what we make, right? Like that's not being prideful or anything. Sometimes I also like to um, create one more layer above this using whatever shape or layers that I was kind of working with and add more dots or little confetti pieces randomly 
as not part of the pattern, but just part of, um, you know, just adding a bit more just wherever I want to. And sometimes if you add enough, it really can fool the eye well enough that um, no one will even notice easily that it was created from a seamless tile, which is always cool, right? So um, not that it matters, like, oh my gosh, look at that, it's a seamless tile. How dare she? But um, it's just a fun way to, to sort of um, play around with it a little bit. Another way that you can kind of do that sort of, is create a canvas that's much bigger. Um, like, let's say 17 inches, this will allow me to do a 45 degree angle. So let's say we have a 17 inch canvas now. That 12 by 12 is the paper itself. And remember, this is just a pattern, right? It's just flood filled in there. Um, so I'm going to fill the rest of the background, but you'll see what I'm about to do. It doesn't matter what color the background is at the moment because I'm going to change the fill to zero. So all we have is that pattern. And as you see there, now it has a transparent background. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my canvas size. Don't crop. Change your canvas size to 12. Now, why we're not cropping is if you crop, it actually cuts the image itself. When you change your canvas size, all of that outer part is still there. It's still all there. We just want it to be in our 12 by 12 um, area. So I'm going to go ahead and create our background layer, just white. And then I'm going to take our pattern, which if, as I do control T, you're going to see it. See, it's there on the outside and I'm just going to rotate it. Now doing that, I find it's yet another way that you can confuse the eye a bit. Or you can use it as another method. Let's say you wanted to have overlapping confetti. So you can do it again. Look at that. Ah, it's crazy. You might want to move it from the center point because you can kind of notice that. And since it's larger, we can easily sort of move it where we want it to go. I'm going to be a little careful. That puts it right in the center, like I said not to do. All right, there we go. So this is gives, gives us overlapping confetti. And then I'm going to do like a linear burn. So they kind of like, um, you know, like their colors are overlapping. Too fun. I cut off that one pattern right there. That's where the edge is. That's too funny. Let's see. Oh, no, the other one. But um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. It's not too, too hard. Um, to do this, to play around with this, I find that it's it's pretty easy. Oh, that's from the um, extra guy that I had made before. I was like, why is that guy there? Why is she doing this to me? She's so rude. It's okay. She's not real. She's fake. She's so fake. So now she's gone. We don't love her anymore. <laughs> Ta-da! There we go. Um, but yeah, that's how you would do like a confetti pattern. And this is adding a little extra. Um, it can be as busy or not as busy as you want. For some reason, it reminds me of Caterpillar right now. But yeah, this is how I do it. And it doesn't have to be confetti. It can be any kind of pattern. Um, anything, really. Uh, it can be a really clean, organized pattern. Um, and also you can create separate layers to play around with it that way if you'd like to. Just, yeah, go wild. And um, again, the key points of creating the repeating patterns um, seamlessly and Photoshop is to never go outside the edges, right, of your canvas ever, at least in this method, you wouldn't do that. And also um, make sure that whenever you offset that there is something along each edge of the canvas for it to um, pull from, I guess is the best way to put it. So yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of tutorial. If not, let me know. If you do, let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.